Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I am taking a look at one of your designs. Yes, it is not Thursday, but nothing on the workshop has really jumped out at me. So I'm just going to look at one of your designs that did jump out at me. So today we are looking at the Luminescence Combat Cruiser, which is this thing right here. So this large ship features the 2 centimeter beam system, and if I sit here for long enough, you'll see a lovely green beam come shooting out the front. And there we go, there is the green beam making use of that good mod. One thing I will mention before I go any further, if you are trying to use a mod that is using the 2 centimeter beam system, there is a good chance the game is simply going to crash, because there seems to be something wrong with that mod. I've been having problems all morning using that mod on different ship blueprints, so if you are going to use this ship, do be aware that it might crash every now and again when trying to spawn it in. So anyway, what does this ship feature? Well, it's a large ship built around the beam system mod, and it does use some of the uh, DLC blocks, so if you do not have the DLC blocks, you can still spawn it in, but you'll probably have empty gaps in some of the rooms. So let's start by going around the outside by starting at the very front here. So at the very front we can see a common theme with this ship where it is very grey in its design. It could use some colours but that is just a personal preference. We've got two ore detectors hidden in there for some extra decorations. We've got an antenna sitting down there. We have got then part of the 2 centimeter beam system sitting in the middle surrounded by two cameras. We've got some nice little blast door edges there to make it look even better. And we can see up there where I'm sitting, which is the cockpit of how we can fly and control the weapons on this ship. So we have a glorious barrel here to shoot out. It's a shame it wasn't using the plasma beam system, because that would have been worthy of this barrel. Just the giant blue beam coming shooting out. As we come along the side there, we can see some lovely block work using the blast door edges and the steel blocks. As we come along, we can see an interior turret sitting on the side with some hydrogen thrusters. This ship is equipped with both hydrogen thrusters and ion thrusters to keep you going. We can see some more interior turrets there. At the top there, we can see some rocket turrets. We've got some merge blocks going around a door, which is how we're going to access it. And we have a connector if you wanted to connect up to another ship to refuel this one. Let's move along there. We've got some interior walls there at the very back to give it some more flavor. We've got some windows there to add some decoration blocks to this iron thruster block. As we go along, we get to the very rear of the ship where the hydrogen tanks are being stored with a load of hydrogen thrusters. As we come around to the very back, let's speed this up a little bit. We've got two large hydrogen thrusters to push us along. If we come and take a sneaky look down here, we can see that we got some generators there, the hydrogen tanks, not much protection on the hydrogen tanks. So if you want to use this ship, it could be an idea to use the shield generator mod in order to stop them from going kaboom. And if you wanted to go even more kaboom, you could use the tank explosion mod, which causes your hydrogen tanks and oxygen tanks to explode like warheads. A lot of the components seem to be quite unprotected on this ship, but it still is a very good design nonetheless. Let's go take a quick look on the top, so if I come around to the side here. We have some more blast door edges there, they look like auction tanks which have been half finished. We then got the vanilla rocket turrets, which I do love to use. Got a sneaky interior turret there, we have some doors for us to go in and out. Moving along there to this bit, we got some nice block work and a nice plain part on the front there, which is the barrel. Ta-da! So now it's time to take a look on the inside. Taking control of my character, let's hop out this seat. I'm now going to start from the cockpit. So this is the cockpit right here. We have got a lovely view of the barrel, so we can see the beam exactly where it's going. But I'll come to the controls in just a bit. As we walk along this unfinished catwalk, we can view down to the floor below, and right next to us is the laser generators from the 2 centimeter beam mod. As we continue along here, we go down to another floor with even more generators, and we are greeted with loads and loads of reactors and panels. 
Let's come across to a clear panel over here. And take a look at some of these. If I was to turn off my lights, it does get quite dark, but we have this lovely green glow in here. So these panels have been set up to do basically everything in the ship. They are dotted around in each room, so you can control stuff without going into the control panel. So we can turn the reactors on and off with a click of the button. We've then got the air vents, which I'm going to leave on. We then have the laser lights, so that turns the lights on and off. Coming across here, we then have the laser lights, the air vents, and the reactors yet again, just for symmetry. If I turn around and take a look through this room here, this is where we see our first DLC block, which is the projector, show you how the lasers have been set up. If I just come around to here, you can sort of see how they've been set along there to a fire. And we have a little button panel over here for us to use. So we have the laser generators, which we can turn on and off. If we turn them on, the ship will start firing, but we do get the beams going all the way around the room. And no, these beams will not hurt you, but you can physically block them. We then have the laser console block on and off, so if you want to turn that on and off, you can do. And of course, the lights. And that's about it. Looking down, we can see some air vents which have been nicely covered up with some windows. We've got the beam there and the hum of the beam as well. Yes, these are rather noisy blocks. We have a seat here which does nothing, but this is for your co-pilot to sit on while you're flying or jumping. So he can come over to here, or she can come over to here, and turn the lasers on and off to fire them without you having to do that. In fact, you could order them around to fire this ship. But let's move along slightly further to the back of the ship. So we go past some typing blocks there, which I'm not going to touch. We've got an LCD screen there showing us the ship's power, the engines and the total power usage and all that. Opening up the doors, we come through to uh, this lovely room right here, which is how we can exit the ship. These doors here are identical on both sides, where they are just simply airlocks for you to go in. So you just come in through the outside, it then pumps air into this room, and then you're ready to walk into the main body of the ship. We have a gravity generator there, so we can jump around in here. As we come through, we've got a medical bay to heal ourselves up, change our outfits and whatnot, some cryo chambers, some lockers for us to store stuff in. Another display screen here where we can see some important information on the ship. Up here, which have been turned upside down, we have some more options. So we've got the medical bay room we can turn on and off. we then got the LCD screen, we've got the air vent, and we've got the light. Why it's upside down there, I do not know, but there's a good way of hiding it and keeping it out the way. Opening up this door here, we come to the power room with the jump drive. Now, I do love this button over here. Take a listen to this. Oh, no, that was the lights. Don't take a listen to that one. I want to listen to this one. Oh, yes, the sound of those hydrogen engines starting up reminds me so much of a tractor. It's so good. But yes, this is where we can manually turn the additional power on and off. We have got some cargo containers in here for us to uh, store some goods in. If I come through past the hydrogen engines, we've got some more reactors in here. We've got the jump drive, which we can access if we want to do it manually. More cargo containers dotted all the way around the room. We've got some assemblers in here. We've got even more cargo containers everywhere. Some timer blocks hidden around. And some oxygen tanks. Now, there was one door in this ship, which was on the very top, which I haven't seen an entrance to just yet. When I was looking around, so I'm very quickly going to go and take a look at that, which I believe was over here. And they cannot be opened. But this one can. Let's take a look through here. What is in this room? So it looks like it's an access panel to go and do stuff with the beacon and the conveyors. Let's break the conveyors and if I can find. There we go. In fact, no, I won't break the conveyors. I'll simply break the door on the opposite side in case it decides to break the ship. Going in on the other side, we can see a programmable block. What is on the programmable block? Absolutely nothing. But you can use it if you want. So you could use a script for the turrets, script for the automatic door closing and all that. It's up to you what you want to do 
with the programmable block. But now I think it's time to give the ship a little drive around. Yes, I've talked about the outside and its details. What I haven't talked about is the size. So the size of this ship is 2,911 blocks, which is, is fairly decent size for a large ship. It's not massive, it's not going to break the game when you spawn it in, it's pretty friendly. So we do have some information on there, so like one to two crew members, we've got some cryo chambers and all that. It's always good when they're listed like that. But now I'm going to bring up my HUD, and we have a few options. Let's go in first person view, actually. So number one is to turn the laser system on, where it will start generating its little beam, and once it's fully powered, it will launch a nice green beam at your enemies. Number two is a camera for you to view the beam as it fires. I mean, you could use it to aim, but you might as well use it to view the beam. Number three is to turn the reactors on and off. That would mean we're using the hydrogen engines then, or if you turn off the hydrogen engines, you won't have any power. Number four is to turn on and off the interior turrets and rocket turrets going around the ship. So that is, if you want to save on ammunition and not waste it, you can turn it off. We've got an antenna and a beacon on the eight and nine slots, but I like to keep them turned off. As for the other tabs, there is nothing on there apart from the wave, which I do at the start of the video. So let's go for a little fly, shall we? Moving forwards, it accelerates reasonably well. Stopping, once again, it's reasonably well done for a large ship. Moving left, moving right, we can see the ion thrusters there helping us out, which allows us to move pretty damn fast on the left and right, up and down, speeding up, it's pretty slow, going down, and now for wiggling my mouse around while we are moving, it's a solid ship to be using, it's got a nice lot of thrust to it, it's got a nice control to it, some weapons around there to keep you safe, and a lovely beam system to shoot at your enemies. In fact, I kind of want to crash this into the planet for a change. I've blown things up, I've crashed ships into buildings, but I have not crashed things into a planet before. Alrighty, we are nearly there. It's taken about 10 minutes to actually get over here. But I'm about to crash into the planet. So as per usual, it'll be in the description below if you wish to uh, download and uh, try it out yourself. Remember, you will need to have the 2 centimeter B mods, and here we go. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Yes, it doesn't look like much damage actually happens from a full speed collision into the planet. We've just lost a bit of steel blocks. I bet it was the antenna. Those things are lethal when you try and ram things. But anyway, like I said, it's in the description below if you wish to download it and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.